Hey everyone, and welcome. Uh, today we are going to talk specifically about crazing. Crazing is when your glaze cracks due to a mismatch of coefficient of thermal expansion with the body. Specifically, your glaze has a higher thermal expansion than the body, meaning the glaze is in tension and the body is in compression. Uh, crazing can happen either right away out of the kiln or possibly even years later. Uh, there is no way to avoid it, so slow cooling your kiln down to room temp just so it doesn't craze right away really is doing nothing because it will craze eventually. Uh, so now crazing can cause uh, a few problems here. Uh, two main ones are going to be body strength. It weakens your body and your glaze and your piece as a whole, um, as well as possible mold, uh, fungus, bacteria growing inside of those cracks. Um, uh, body strength is going to be a problem that everyone faces. Now, the one that people are most concerned about is not the one that people face the most. Uh, and that is mold and bacteria. Uh, mold and bacteria, they can be very bad. Don't get me wrong. They can also be great. They can make miso, kombucha, whatever it may be. Now, the people, why people freak out about mold and bacteria is because they're afraid it's going to grow inside of those spots. And now it can. If you leave a damp mug in the back of your cabinet uh, for years and years and years, yeah, it could very well grow below the bacteria. Um, but if you use the mug regularly and you use dishwashing soap, maybe you drink coffee out of it or tea or just simply you put hot water in it, all of these things are going to kill mold and bacteria. So in the end, in first world countries, we have such luxuries to have these things that we really don't have to worry about those so long as we take what we've been given and use it appropriately. Um, but the one that we should be worried about is body strength. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit more later. So what is crazing? Uh, crazing is when your body and your glaze, after being fired, expand at different rates. So with your glaze, let's say your glaze here has a coefficient of thermal expansion of 8.0 and your body has a thermal expansion of 7.2. Now, these may seem pretty close, but as in my last video I talked about, they aren't. Now, what happens? Well, because this glass here, which is what a glaze is, is fused to the body here, it wants to stay in that part of the body it fused to. Um, so when your body then expands you would think that it would possibly pop off um, but your body is also going to expand too um, not as much but it expands too all right pretty close this part here wanted to stay connected to this part here but it isn't and this part here wanted to stay connected to this part here and this part wanted to stay connected to this part etc 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 now because those aren't there and it's trying to reach for those what it's going to do instead is crack. And here, and here, and it'll crack like that, and this, and this. Now, the amount of cracks depends on the difference of the body and glaze. Uh, if this was 9.0, 10.0, uh, each one of these would have more cracks. So. The greater the glaze thermal expansion is than the bodies, the more cracks you will see. Uh, now, I hope that makes sense. Uh, because now when this then settles down, 
back on to the body. And let's say it's back on to the body in the normal spot. I glaze in her facial zone one way. We'll put that back in. Um, it's still going to exhibit those cracks. Uh, it may be tighter than they were when it was expanded, uh, but they're going to be there. Uh, and they're going to be all the way down to the body. And frankly, because there's that glaze interfacial zone, it's going to cr start slightly cracking that body. Uh, and this is one of the reasons it weakens the body. Um, it is now going to be more susceptible to cracks. Uh, the body is. We have a few bandits that are in charge of this. That is my best attempt at drawing a burglar. Um, so our few bandits are going to be our, mostly of our fluxes. Um, um, specifically our alkali metals. Uh, the two main ones that you're gonna be using are potassium, potash, and sodium, soda. Uh, calcium uh, is also a culprit but not as much as soda and potash. These have thermal expansions greater than 30. And so those are gonna be the main components that are causing your glazes to craze. Um, these come in typically Custer, Minspar, Nefsi, and a lot of the Fritz. Um, most of the Fritz are going to actually just contain those two. These three are going to be your main culprits for crazing. The other two that you're going to typically see in glazes are going to be lithium and magnesium. But these have both very, very low thermal expansions. Uh, magnesiums, even under three. Lithium and magnesium can help you, but when you have too much lithium, the problem is you're going to get leaching. And if you had too much magnesium, the problem is, is your surface tension is going to be too high and possibly a ton of crawling. Uh, so we're going to look to a few other things to help us. Uh, and those are going to be our glasses. Glasses are going to be typically seen as a few things. Uh, the main ones, I mean, people consider titanium, zirconium, and a few other elements as glasses except these never typically melt in our glazes as glasses. So the main ones we are going to be looking at are silica, typically seen as SiO2, alumina, and boron. Silica is gonna be our main friend. It melts super well. It lowers the thermal expansion, uh, is uh, creates a strong glaze. Uh, but the thing is, you need all of these to get that to melt. So it's really a dance we are playing. Uh, we are, we're playing a dance with fluxes, which each have their own problems. Now, one of our best friends to get things to melt is Mr. Boron. Mr. Boron here melts a like 450 degrees Celsius. How freaking wonderful is that? Uh, it melts so low and so quickly. That is why it's typically found in Fritz and why so many people use it when you're going below cone 10. Uh, it'll help start melting all of these so you don't need as much of this. It'll help start melting silica. It forms a glass on its own. Ceramics is a balance. It's a dance. We have to play with chemistry. We have to play with the body we have, the glazes and knowledge we know. Now, the last one that we have is alumina. Alumina is going to be typically found in clays, but has problems on its own. It raises the melting temperature very high, but it causes a much sturdier glaze. It causes a really strong glaze. Uh, it's a great thing. So the last thing to consider is elasticity. Uh, elasticity is not going to be something on the forefront of your mind, nor something you aim for, um, but it is a great thing. Typically, we're going to see this in the additions of zinc. Uh, zinc is going to add some elasticity, although it is going to raise the coefficient of thermal expansion. It will also raise elasticity, and because it creates an, more of an elastic glass, 
it's going to be able to stretch more and this glaze interfacial zone will stretch with the glaze causing it less likely to craze. But the last thing I want to mention is how do we test for this? Uh, testing for this is simple. It is called the boiling water ice water test is you are going to have a stove on the pot with water that is boiling purple water here and then you are going to fill another bowl cup pot whatever it may be with full of ice and then you're going to pour your purple water on it is you're going to take a test tile or a piece you have made with a glaze on it and what you are going to do is you're going to take it and you're going to dunk it in this and then dunk it in there back and forth um, you know leave it in there for five ten seconds to get it down all the way cold then put it back in the boiling water real quick to get let it become hot again and go back and forth if it, your glaze passes the test without crazing without shivering you have a great glaze on your body uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys have any questions on crazing or i didn't explain things that well let us know. We are more than happy to answer your questions.